one of the most um, frequently occurring geometric tolerances is the position tolerance, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Uh, first of all, we need to understand the concept of true position. And then if we're talking about the position of a feature, then we need to think of that position in terms of what locating geometry do we need to describe that position. And then, of course, we need to be able to describe the attributes of the position tolerance zone. What is true position? Well, if we go back to the design specification, we note that there will be basic dimensions that tell us something about where a geometric feature is located. And so we need these basic dimensions to tell us a theoretical position so that we can compare the actual feature to what was uh, specified in the design. Of course, we're going to need a set of datums to build a datum reference frame and be able to talk about the position, for instance, this through hole here. Where is it located? And you can't answer that question until you tell me where the datum reference frame is. So are we saying with respect to these two surfaces, these two surfaces? So we need to know where our datum reference frame is in order to say something about this position. So when we say true position, think of the nominal location. And you should be able to be able to obtain that from the design specification. I should also make a note here, and that is, if you have a position tolerance, a geometric tolerance, you should not have a dimensional tolerance on the position. So something's not quite right there. If I put a dimensional tolerance on this whole feature, and I have a position geometric tolerance, one of those two should be eliminated uh, because they are going to overlap and that will not be a coherent uh, control of that position. Okay, so we know from our symbology here that the position tolerance corresponds to this uh, target symbol. And what we're trying to do is control either an individual feature or a group of features with respect to a datum reference frame built off of some other set of features. By controlling position, we're going to see an indirect effect on the orientation and the shape of the feature that we're trying to control. The intent here is let's allow the position of the feature to deviate from its true position according to the tolerance zone. Don't forget, you need a datum reference frame or you can't talk about location. The location of the feature in terms of the locating geometry will be allowed to vary within that zone. As long as it's within the zone, then we say it's within specifications. So what are the characteristics that are important <clears throat> for the position tolerance zone? Well, the position tolerance zone is the most restrictive in that, first of all, we have a shape of the tolerance zone based on the nature of the feature, and we have the size of the tolerance zone specified in the feature control frame, as we've already seen. We also have an orientation of the tolerance zone with respect to the datum reference frame. And lastly, it's located at true position. So whenever you think of position tolerance, the first thing that should come to mind is what is true position for this feature. So you can see this tolerance zone is the most restrictive that we've seen so far. What is the relationship to manufacturing? Well, you should be thinking along these lines. First of all, if I'm using a datum reference frame, then there's some precedence before we look at the position features. And so in my manufacturing processes, I should be thinking about creating the datum features in the same uh, step in the process or prior to creating the position features. And the accuracy of my datum references will have an impact because if we're creating a datum reference frame, then the location and orientation of that datum reference frame will be affected by the surfaces that we're using to create our datum references. The datum features should be used for fixturing when at all possible, and we'll see examples of that throughout the semester. Well, we're going to describe how our workpiece is oriented and positioned with respect to our process by using this datum reference frame. <clears throat> and the sequence of fixturing as you could imagine, we'll have to follow the establishment of the datum reference frame. By that we mean the sequence in which your datums are constructed, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So it has direct impact on 
what happens in manufacture. When we think of true position of the feature, we think of nominal, and when we think of the actual feature that we create, we have to somehow locate it. So when I say locating geometry, I'm talking about finding where the actual feature is with respect to some datum reference frame that we're going to establish. So here's an example. We could have a point, and that point might represent a, uh, a spherical component. We could have a line that might represent an axis. We could have a plane representing a surface or a midplane. What is the shape of the tolerance zone for position tolerances? Well, we could have a spherical tolerance zone, and that would occur if we're trying to control a point. So you can see here in the sphere, if I had a point inside the sphere, then we're saying it is within the tolerance zone and it's acceptable. If I have an axial feature, then we're going to have a cylindrical tolerance zone, and we've seen that before. That's no surprise. I'm trying to contain an axis in three-dimensional space. Or I might have a prismatic feature. And for a prismatic feature, <clears throat> I might be trying to control a uh, midplane, for instance. And therefore, I'm going to take two parallel planes, or you can think of it as a box, and try to contain that uh, midplane within that box. Of course, the size, what it refers to, depends upon the geometry. Here, of course, T corresponds to diameter. T here also corresponds to the diameter of the tolerance zone, and then this would be the width of our box. The orientation uh, is also restricted for the position tolerance zone, so we can't be at any orientation, but we need to look at our datum reference frame and the relationship on the design, uh, the relationship on the design between the part feature and our datum reference frame. <clears throat> so if I look at a cylindrical zone, or parallel planes, we need an orientation. If it's spherical, obviously there is no orientation. So my tolerance zone has to be oriented with respect to what we see in the design. It may be perpendicular or parallel, depending upon the nature of the datum references, and we'll see that in examples. The actual position, and this is different than true position. Actual means we have a part. And now we're going to measure. So the first step, of course, and we'll see that when we get to inspection, is establishing the datum reference frame. So we have to determine where the datums are with respect to each other and then as a whole in terms of the datum reference frame. So we'll measure each feature and we'll use the mating envelope subject to any perpendicularity or parallelism constraints. And then we'll measure the feature and establish actual position, not true position. We'll find the feature regardless of the datum reference frame. In other words, we're not going to orient it with respect to the datum reference frame. Use a mating envelope for the ideal geometry and then determine its location with respect to the datum reference frame. So the problem is, what is the location of the part feature? That's what it comes down to within that datum reference frame. So we're not orienting the part feature, we're not positioning it, we're just finding out where is it located and oriented, and then we'll compare that to true position. So when I look at the position of a feature, and here I've got an exaggerated slot feature, the question is, where is it located? What we see in this feature here is certainly there's some deviation in orientation of the slot, there's deviation in the shape, and there's deviation in the location. So altogether, they are going to contribute to the deviation in position. In other words, they're going to affect our ability to satisfy this position tolerance. So the actual position is bounded by some type of tolerance zone that we've previously described. The width of the tolerance zone is specified as T, and we've already seen that. And then our part feature is acceptable if it falls within the tolerance zone. So here's a simple hole example. I have a uh, plate here with a through hole. And we note that we have basic dimensions. So again, there should not be a dimensional tolerance on this or this. And we know where true position is. 
based upon our datum reference frame. So we note in the datum reference frame, A is first, and that's established at the bottom of the plate. B is second, that's established on this side. And then C is third, and that is established on this side. Note the role of A. That is going to essentially have the most impact on the orientation of the datum reference frame. And that's not surprising. We have large surface area there for the bottom of the plate. When we locate our tolerance zone, it will be with respect to true position. So that means we're going to place the axis of our cylindrical tolerance zone. We know it's cylindrical. We're dealing with a cylindrical feature. The locating geometry is the axis. And so our cylindrical tolerance zone is position or centered 6.2 units from C and 9.5 units from B, based upon the datum reference frame that we've created. And now we will allow the axis of this hole to vary within that uh, tolerance zone. Note that the tolerance zone is always at true position. So what actually happens when we create this uh, part feature in terms of the surfaces? Well, if you think back to the notion of virtual condition and resultant condition, we can think of the boundaries defined by the size of the tolerance zone and the material conditions. We note that the tolerance zone size is 0 0.05, so you should recognize, based upon the dimensional tolerance of the feature, that our virtual condition is 3.45, the resultant condition 3.65, and so we see uh, in the figure here our virtual condition and our resultant condition. All right, so we have a 2D annulus, the inner ring being the virtual condition, the outer ring the resultant condition. And what we're saying here is the surface of the hole can vary anywhere within there. So we're allowing the position to move around as long as the axis remains within the tolerance zone. So the steps in determining the position of the actual feature were to establish the datum features in terms of our references. And we've seen the use of mating envelope if I have a feature of size subject to constraints. We find the part feature, again, using the mating envelope with no constraints. We find the locating geometry from that mating envelope. So it's derived directly from the mating envelope for instance, an axis or a plane. And then we position and orient the tolerance zone with respect to true position. Again, this is from the design spec, the basic dimensions. And then we're going to check if that locating geometry is fitting within our tolerance zone over the entire length of the feature. So here's a simple hole example. Question is, where is the position of this hole? Is it on the uh, left? figure or the right. And what it comes down to is it will depend upon how that uh, feature is being used. For instance, on the left, if we're using that feature as a datum location with respect to another datum, for instance, if this is our datum, we have to orient this with respect to that datum if it's secondary. And that means we're going to find the largest cylinder that fits perpendicular to the datum. So this would be the axis of that hole. If it's independent, for instance, the feature location, then we find it regardless of any other features, which means we're going to find the largest cylinder, the same hole, but it's obviously a, a different cylinder, which means we have a different axis in terms of orientation and position. Now, this could be the feature that we're trying to control or, for instance, a primary datum. So you can see the same hole that's being used in different contexts could have a different axis. So at this stage, you should understand the notion of true position. That is the nominal location that we're trying to control. And what does a position tolerance zone look like in terms of shape, size, orientation, and position? And then finally, the feature location. How do we actually locate the feature that we're trying to control? In summary, you're going to have to have a datum reference frame. And that's how we locate our true position within that datum reference frame. The locating geometry on the feature 
is going to be controlled by the tolerance zone. We've also seen that deviations in the location, orientation, and shape are cumulative. They all contribute to the position of a feature. And mating envelopes are going to be used to determine the actual location. And don't forget, we determine actual location without orienting the mating envelope. We find the locating geometry with respect to the datum reference frame.